Welcome back to Think Thrice Problem Solving. Today we're going to be solving a fun kind of number theory-ish problem. So we have the square root of x plus y is 7, and x plus the square root of y is 11. x and y are both integers. So you can take a few minutes, uh, work on this on your own. If you think about it hard enough, you can probably just figure out what the answer is going to be. Well, we're going to find it um, deliberately in a mathematical way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into a solution here. So the first thing we're going to notice is that x and y are integers. So I know that 7 minus y is an integer, which means that the square root of x must also be an integer. Um, same thing with the square root of y. So what does that tell me? So it tells me a few things, but one basic thing it tells me is that x and y both need to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so I know that there are actually natural numbers then, uh, or whole numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So let's go ahead and jump into this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this square root of x plus y is equal to 7. Oops. And I'm going to subtract my second equation. So I'm going to take it minus x plus the square root of y is equal to 7, or equal to 11. And what I'm going to get there is I'm going to get the square root of x minus the square root of y, I'm going to put these together for a reason, plus y minus x. And I'm going to bracket those guys. And then I have 7 minus 11, which is negative 4. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is I have the square root of x squared of y. Those guys are kind of bugging me a little bit here. But when I look at this expression right here, I'm going to use this other fact. So I know that a minus b times a plus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. So that means that y minus x is equal to the square root of y plus the square root of x times the square root of y minus the square root of x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. So I'm going to get over here, I have the square root of x minus the square root of y plus, and then I have the square root of y plus the square root of x times the square root of y minus the square root of x. And that whole thing is equal to negative 4. And what I'm going to notice here is I have the square root of x minus the square root of y and the square root of x minus the square root of y times negative 1. So I can go ahead and uh, factor out that square root of y minus square root of x. So I'm going to put a negative, and I'm going to get the square root of y minus the square root of x. So that's going to be multiplied by this guy becomes negative 1 because I factored out the opposite. And then I'm going to get plus the square root of y plus the square root of x. And that whole thing is equal to negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out a negative 1 in this whole equation just to make it so it's positive 4 on the right side. So I'm going to get square root of x minus square root of y times square root of x plus the square root of y minus 1 is equal to 4. Okay, so this is my new equation. <laughs> And this actually simplifies it significantly. So if we look at this from a number theory uh, standpoint, I know that uh, x and y are both uh, integers. And I know additionally that square root of x and square root of y are both integers. So what does that mean? That means that this guy on the left and this guy on the right must both be integers. Okay, so... Um, in addition to that, I can look at this 4 and say, how can I factor out that 4? So if I um, look at my equation here, so that's going to happen a few different ways. So this guy could be 1, and this red guy could be 4. This guy could be 2, and the red guy could be 2. Or this guy could be 4, and the red guy could be 1. And since we're not 100% sure what everything's going to look like, I guess technically we could also have these guys all as negative. And we'll investigate that in a second. 
But let's look at these three different cases. So if I have the square root of x minus, so this is case 1. So square root of x minus square root of y is equal to 1. And square root of x plus the square root of y minus 1 is equal to 4. So that's equal to 5. Then I can go ahead and add these two equations. And I'm going to get 2 square root of x plus 0 is equal to 6. So the square root of x is equal to 3. So unfortunately, there's a little bit of a problem here. Oh, no, there's not. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what does that tell us? So that tells us that x would be equal to 9. All right. Um, and we can quickly see that if I had had negative 1 and negative 4 there, it wouldn't have worked because then I would have had square root of x is equal to a negative number. All right. Um, and for the same reason, it's not going to work in the other cases either. So let's look at case number 2 now. So in case number 2, I have square root of x minus square root of y is equal to 2. And I have square root of x plus the square root of y is equal to um, 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. I can do the same thing, add those two guys together. And I'm going to end up with 2 square root of x is equal to 5. So the square root of x is equal to 5 over 2. And unfortunately, if I square both sides, I do not get an integer for x. So this one is not going to be a solution. And I can look at the third case here. So if I look at the third case, and I have square root of x minus square root of y is equal to 4. And square root of x plus the square root of y uh, minus 1 is equal to 1, so equals 2. I end up getting the same thing, so I'll end up getting 2 square root of x is equal to 6, so square root of x is equal to 3, which gives me that solution of x is equal to 9. Okay, so we know we're going to have x equal to 9, so x is equal to 9, that's one of our guys. And then we could look at here and we can just work backwards from there to figure out what is y. Okay, so I know x is equal to 9, x is equal to 9. So let's look at both of these sides over here and kind of figure out which one we want to use. So over here, if I use this equation, I get square root of x, so 3, plus square root of y is equal to 5. And if I use this one, I get 3 plus the square root of y is equal to 2. One of these has a problem. So over here, I get square root of y is equal to 2. Over here, I get square root of y is equal to negative 1. So this is a problem because that's going to give me an imaginary number, not the integer I'm looking for. But this guy on the left is going to give me y equals 4, and that's actually going to be my solution is x equals 9 and y equals 4. Okay, And if we go back to our original equation, and if I plug in my 9 and my 4 into this original equation, I get square root of x is 3 plus 4 is 7, and 9 plus the square root of 4, which is 2, is 11. So it looks like it works out. So some of you might have been able to see that right away, but I don't like to just look at something and say, that's our solution. I like to figure it out in a deliberate way. So I hope you enjoyed working through this problem with me. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have your own video idea, please email it to thinkthriceproblemsolving at gmail.com. And as you're working through problems on your own, think once, think twice, and if you really get stuck, Think thrice.